Hi everyone, so this is just a little video blog because it's the new season of grassroots football is about to start so there's going to be loads of new under 7s teams out there loads of under 8s teams that have just moved up from under 7s um, and you're even going to get under 6 teams starting to form now as well so I thought I'd do a little bit of a blog on what good coaching looks like at that age group and what we need to consider and think about at that age as well um, the first thing I would say is the best coaches I've seen at this age group they allow the children to express themselves and they allow the children to make lots of decisions whilst they're playing now it's really important that they're allowed to experiment and try new things they might want to try back heels and rabonas and fun stuff and they, this should be encouraged let them express themselves let them try different things let them learn from each other and copy each other um, and have a go at that but ultimately as well let them make decisions they are six seven eight years old when they make decisions they'll make a lot of wrong decisions in our opinion but let them make decisions and then let them get better at making those decisions and just provide advice about their decision making so it's important that we don't play station coach from the side shouting pass shoot dribble let them make decisions let them make mistakes let them have fun let them explore one other thing that i get challenged on sometimes but i'm a strong believer in this is they need to have at least a thousand touches per session that's a, in an hour session at least a thousand touches of the football i think this is actually really easy to do if you mix up with ball mastery 1v1 2v2 stuff which they're going to get the most out of anyway they can get at least a thousand touches per session. I'm going to do a webinar at the end of the month on coaching under sevens players and that I will, will show a load of session examples. So during that webinar, if you want to sign up, it's free. You will be able to see a load of examples of how to do sessions to let them take thousands of touches. The reason we need to let them do this is their brain is at a golden age of learning. Okay, and the more touches of the football, the better they get, they're going to be technically. So they need to touch the ball with different parts of the feet, with both feet, allowing that expression and freedom to try different things all the time. Get them touching the football as much as they can. It's really important at this age, especially. And that means we don't worry too much about passing. Coaches always go, oh, I want them to pass more. I want them to spread out. They're not going to. They are not going to keep spreading out and finding space. At this age, they're aware of what is directly around them so take advantage of that it's like going to these kids ten, telling kids at this age to pass the ball is like going here's a present at christmas and they love it and they go right now go give it to someone else to play with they're probably gonna have a meltdown now i'm not saying don't do any passing at all or anything like that you can do passing kids will naturally pass anyway but i wouldn't focus sessions on it i'd focus sessions on dribbling loads of touches of the ball as much as you can so just understand that they are selfish at this age and that's all right that is okay so again for me great environments loads of games loads of fun you don't have to be playing matches or this is a passing drill dress it up with language they understand and games they want to play that are really good fun for them so think about like the cartoon characters they like the films they like dress games up like that so they they really buy into it and get fully involved in it it doesn't have to be all serious straight away for those kids um and then something that comes up really important for me they have to rotate positions there's no such thing as a seven-year-old striker or a seven-year-old defender and they need to play equal play, playing time so i've got another blog on why rotation of positions is so important so please have a watch of that but at this age every player should be rotating positions all the time you might get pressure from parents my kids are striker etc etc if you listen to that blog you'll see the reasons why they need to start playing different positions a couple of the things are actually long term it prevents injury um, they will develop different physical characteristics playing in different positions and you do not know where they're going to end up as a player also look at where players play now a right back is not a right back anymore they have to be able to cross they have to be able to shoot they have to be able to finish they have to be able to play as center back sometimes they have to be players as a center midfielder so if you get the parent or the coach that's going i want them to specialize in this position because this is where they're going to play actually look at what players in that position have to do and what skill set they need and then you've got an argument back to say, well, actually, they need to develop their all round game to be better at that position. Equal playing time goes without saying at this age group, they should all be playing equal playing time. They're there for fun. They're there to want to enjoy it. They will develop at different stages. I can guarantee you now your best player is normally your most physically developed player. It's nothing to do with them being the actual best all round player. They are physically more dominant. So give equal playing time because they grow at, e at different times and different stages. Like I said, I'm doing a webinar at the end of the month. It's completely free to sign up. It'll be about an hour long. Um, you can sign up through the links below and hopefully I'll see some of you there.